I think I figured out why Peter Snyder got such a hand. Is he the guy that writes the paychecks? Is that it? <laughs> Doesn't work with faculty, that's right. Well, y'all, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be here. And, and uh, yeah, this, this place has really grown. I remember when it was, uh, and I know Governor Hodges as well, when it was small and coming up, but it kept on coming up. And now th this is, there's a lot of brain power coming out of this place. And that's one of the things I want to, want to mention to you because that's where the future is. And this is a big part of it. Uh, y'all probably heard a the, heard the little cute story about communication, about the young couple didn't communicate very much. They just met each other. They, they realized they in love. He says, I love you. She says, I love you. Let's get married. Okay. And that was about all they talked about it. Went and got married. And then uh, they moved into the little house, and they still didn't talk much. They just happy. Well, about a month or so later, old mama-in-law moved in there with them. Well, they didn't discuss it because they didn't communicate. She, she moved upstairs. Finally, after about a month, the, uh, the groom says to the blushing young bride, baby, don't you think it's about time we find your mama someplace else to live? She said, my mama, I thought she was your mama. <laughs> it's always important to communicate. <laughs> and uh, I know Governor Hodges will, will uh, agree, and uh, Dr. DeCenza as well, as well as Mr. Snyder, it's, it's easy to make decisions and know what to do when you got the facts. But the hard thing to do is to get the facts. It's hard to, to understand. And in order to understand the facts, you have to know something about them. You got to learn. The more you, for every one thing the psychiatrists and all the geniuses tell us, for everything you learn, that means there'd be a hundred or a thousand or maybe more things that you can learn. And that's the problem I got. The more I try to keep learning, the more I realize I don't know. So I might have to stop at some point because the, the, the more you know, the more you realize there is to the world and what a big place it is and how different everything is and how you get a feeling of where you fit in with it. So let me tell you from my point of view where I see South Carolina fitting in with it right now. And I want to start by saying we are right in exactly the right place. There's not another place in the world that we could be that's better for our future prosperity and happiness than South Carolina. And there have been a lot of people over a lot of years, a lot of centuries, that have done a lot of hard work to get us to where we are. This is a, an interesting thing that I see with these big companies that are coming here. They're looking for places to go, looking to invest their money, hundreds of millions of dollars, even billions of dollars. They're looking to invest, and that's a very serious decision because the wrong investment means a lot of people lose a lot of money, a lot of jobs, the company might die, and you have problems. So when they come looking, they're looking real closely. And I've been able to uh, talk to a whole lot of them over the past several years, and this is what I found out. There are a lot of things that they look for when they come. They're looking for a good climate. They, they love the beaches and the mountains. There are very few states, in fact, this is the only one where you can be at the beach, there's gorgeous, white sand with the beautiful ocean and the trees and I think we got 265 golf public golf courses in South Carolina which I think is a world's record if you like golf this is heaven right here <laughs> but to everybody else is paradise all the explorers the kings and queens were sending over way back in the 15s and 1600s every one of them was writing back to their sovereign saying this place that they now call we call Carolina is the most abundant place in all the new world. And it still is that way, and you can see it when you step outside. I saw it flying down, looking at it from above. If you haven't done that lately, you gotta look at it. They don't have what we got in Afghanistan. They don't have it in Montana. They don't have it in Arizona. My friend John McCain says it's so dry in Arizona the trees chase the dogs out there. <laughs> but we got plenty of water. And we're going to keep it clean, too. But what do they look for? They look for research universities. They look for strong two-year schools because that's where the brain power is. And ladies and gentlemen, the future has got to have brain power. It's going to take hands. It's going to take muscle. It's going to take invention. But all of that depends on brain power. And we've got great schools here, including three major research universities and others like this one that are, that are coming onto that scale that are doing magnificent research particularly is it marine biology, I think, or that you're in a class, class by yourself, which is uh, very important, uh, very important, particularly in, in, in this state. But those are important to them. 
also the technical colleges. And it's just wonderful to get to this school. I passed that school on the way in. Well, that is the new paradigm, ladies and gentlemen, what they're looking for. They're looking for research universities and they're looking for technical colleges that are collaborating and four-year schools that are collaborating to provide a path for high school students who are interested in not just working with their minds but with the hands. They might want a liberal arts degree. They may want a degree in this. They may want a degree in that. But by the time they're going through high school, a lot of them are looking. They want to get out. They might want to get married. They might want to get a job. They might want to build something. And our technical colleges started in 1961. Nobody's got anything like that in the whole country. And not only that, but we'll take our people at the technical colleges and we'll send them to another country to look at a plant over there at their request to see how they make the things they make with those big fascinating machines. And we'll come back to this state and set up a curriculum that will train people to work those machines so that when that company comes here, they'll have a steady supply of workers. Not another state in the United States does that. Some of them are starting. We started in 1961. We had a lot of thinking going on back then. We got a lot of thinking going on now. And we've been, we've now we are, we are poised for great, great things. So they look for that technical college. They look for that collaboration. They look for the four-year schools. They look for the research universities. In Anderson recently, there's a company called Arthrex. Arthrex, they make surgical instruments, sophisticated surgical instruments. Used to be you want to go and get your knee fixed You'd have to spend two or three weeks, uh, 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 several days in the hospital, and two or three weeks in rehab and all that. They don't do that anymore. You come out with a Band-Aid on your knee, usually the same day, and go home. It's changed. It's because of the brain power, the innovation, the, the, the invention, and the sophistication of these instruments, among other things. Well, this company called Arthrex started in 1980 in Minnesota, got too cold, so they moved to Florida. Taxes got too high, so they moved to South Carolina and moved up to Anderson. And I asked the man, why did you pick Anderson? He said, because you got everything we need besides the weather, the beautiful weather, and all that I mentioned before. He says, you got a four-year school here. You got Anderson University with about 3,000 students, and the main production there is nurses, which is perfect for them. Also, you have a great technical school right down the street. Perfect. He says, we're entering into an agreement with them. And also, you have Clemson University right out to, up the road, a major research university. We're doing research. We got our people. They got their people. We could put them together. We're going off to scale. Well, that's the new thing, that combination right there, and we offer it in South Carolina. What else do we have that's unique? The Port of Charleston. Ladies and gentlemen, that is an economic engine. The tourism industry in this state is an economic engine. The agricultural industry in this state is an economic engine. And that port is an economic engine. What I want to tell you is we started dredging on Friday at noon. We were down there for a big ceremony. We're going to 52 feet deep at low tide. What does that mean? That means we'll be the deepest port on the Atlantic coast. What does that mean? That means we'll be able to bring the biggest boats in the world into Charleston anytime, 24 hours a day, night a day, two at a time. Nobody else can do that. We could be deeper than Miami, deeper than Baltimore, deeper than Norfolk, deeper than New York, deepest on the Atlantic coast. You know, have y'all seen those ships? Commerce and logistics are what it's all about in the world, getting the things from here to there. You can build it way over there, and if you can ship it over there, then you can, you can survive. Your company can grow. You can hire people. But you've got to be able to get it from one place to another. Well, those ships, you've seen the, they call them 20-foot equivalent units, TEUs. You've seen them on the back of the trucks everywhere you go, coming up and down the highway. Some of them are 20 feet long. Some of them are 40 feet long. Well, a 20-foot equivalent unit, you see, look at them next time you get on the highway. They'll be going by you. If you're on Highway you, uh, I-95, they'll be going by you at about 95 miles an hour. <laughs> a lot of traffic on that road, and I-85 as well. You know how many of those TEUs they can get on one of those big ships? Are you all ready? 22,000. 22,000. And they're coming in all the time down there now, 13,000. And you see them stacked way up, or they go way down into the hole. They're more down below deck than are above deck. They carry a lot of stuff. And our people down at the port can turn them around quicker than any, any place in the U.S. 
Also, what else do we have there? We have two inland ports. What's an inland port? It's not a river, it's a rail line. We have two rail lines. CSX goes through up around Dillon and goes on up into North Carolina, goes through Dillon, crosses I-95, goes to the port of Charleston. Uh, uh, Norfolk Southern comes from Achonda, goes through Greer, South Carolina, between Greenville and Spartanburg, crosses 85, and goes to the Port of Charleston. What's that mean? It means time and money. It means that a trucker can drop a load in Greer, or as soon as we get the port finished in Dillon, can drop it there, put it on the train, and it'll go overnight to the Port of Charleston, and he or she can keep on going, can pick up a load and keep on going. In Charleston, if you're sending your load to Charleston, that saves you a 400-mile trip. That's time and money, and it's almost that much if you're in Dillon. No other state in the country has got that. But the main thing they tell me, the main reason they come to South Carolina is because of what? It's because of the people. They say the people of South Carolina are different from any other people in the country. And we've all suspected that all along, but they're, telling, they're saying it's the, it's the truth. I say, well, how, how are we different? I know we're friendly. Everybody says that we're so friendly because they say, yeah, I went to the restaurant. I could tell I was in South Carolina. I didn't see a map. I just knew I was there. How could you tell? It says, between ordering my food and getting my bill, the waitress called me honey, sweetie, darling, and dear. I knew I was in <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> but they say South Carolina is, and I quote, a handshake state. When someone in South Carolina gives you their word and shakes your hand, you can take it to the bank. You can depend on it. And that's the truth. I've heard stories as I thought back on that about people going to the bank and borrowing money to put up a building, and then they were having the ribbon cutting, and the banker, months later, and the banker came over to the fellow opening up the building and said, uh, oh, Jim, uh, now that we got this building up and everything, you ought to come on down to the bank and let's sign the papers for this loan that I, <laughs> I gave you. We're different, and that different is based on a whole lot of things over our history, but here we are, and nobody can reproduce that. Nobody else has got it. I'm telling you, we're in, a, we're in great, great shape. So what my job is is to see to it that the government does not get in the way, that the government helps this great economic development that is headed our way. It's been coming for a number of years, as Governor Hodges can tell you. But it's, re it's reached a point now where we are outpacing all of our neighbors and most all of the great economic growth and expansion is going to be in the southeast. Too cold everywhere else. People finally deciding that they want to get down where the sun's shining, where they got green grass, got animals, got woods, got water and all that. And this is where it is. So I see it as my job is to, is to assist business to keep the government out of the way. Usually it's the regulations that take too much time and serve no purpose. I'm trying to eliminate all of those I can. I want to keep the taxes down. I've, I've asked the legislature to cut taxes on everybody. Cut taxes on everybody about 15%. Take it down from that, the, take the rates down approximately 15% on everybody making any money in South Carolina. And as for Veterans, military veterans, law enforcement, retirees, peace officer retirees, first responder retirees, if you're drawing a government check, my proposal is there's no income tax on that at all. Why I want to do that? Because we can't pay those people enough anyway. There never will be enough money to pay everybody and get everything we want. We got a six-foot bed and a four-foot blanket. There's no way to stretch it far enough. But for law enforcement in particular, one thing, if you could be safe, if you could be comfortable, if you could be happy, you got to be secure. We got to have good law enforcement. And I, I believe that having that retirement with no income tax will help uh, recruitment as well as, as help uh, retention. And we can't, uh, if you're not safe, you can't do anything. And uh, while I'm thinking about safety, you send your children to school, I, want to, I got a lot of things that I want to do with the public schools, with the charter school, all that sort of stuff. But we got to be sure the children are safe. That's why I propose we want to have a, a licensed, certified law enforcement officer in every school. I think that's the starting point. If we can do that, we may be able to keep some of these things from happening. But again, we've got it all. We are really in great, great shape. And it's because of what God has given us in this place what we've built over the centuries and what we're building right now. 
This university is a perfect example of what we're building right now. It's going to take brain power. It's going to take muscle power. We need a muscular, happy, safe society. And I'll tell you, there's, there's no limit to what South Carolina can do for, for its people. I mean, we are, we are in the promised land. We're in paradise. And I think it's time that we recognize that. And also, you've heard the expression they use around the, the racetrack, you, the horses, equestrians, they say, you, you don't rein in your horse when he's jumping. Well, South Carolina is jumping. I mean, we're, we're launched. We got to be sure to keep the obstacles out the way to use our heads, to educate these children, to be sure that we have good, clean jobs for them. And ladies and gentlemen, I've seen it in my own experience as United States Attorney under President Reagan, and then more recently as Attorney General, as was mentioned by Dr. Desenza. When economic prosperity, when you have economic growth, when you have people with jobs that they want to go to, and they're making good money, a lot of our problems just disappear. Criminal domestic violence goes down, marriages go up, divorces go down, opioid use goes down, all these kind of drug problems go down. Everything gets better. So economic growth is the core without which nothing else will exist. We got to do everything we can to see that our people are working happy, healthy, and that they are economically independent and exactly just the same same goal because that's that's the way to happiness and a great future for south carolina so uh that's my story and as uh, alex hawkins says that's my story i'm sticking to it <laughs> it is a great story for south carolina and i know that you are deeply involved in in making it even a, a better story so i'm i'm happy to be with you i wish i could stay longer i'll stay for a while uh, if anybody's got any questions for me, I'd be glad to try to try to answer them for you. And thank you so much for inviting me. And Governor, it's good to be with you.